Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here. And what we see on screen here is a model which was featured a few weeks ago in the Too Tall Toby CAD vs CAD World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling Tournament. Now, when this model came up, Aaron C was doing co-commentary with me, and he and I got into a discussion about the convert entities command in SolidWorks. We were talking about doing this back wall here and maybe doing a convert entities command from the existing edges. And we talked about some of the pros and cons of using convert entities in SolidWorks. One of the topics that came up was that when you've got a couple of edges, like we've got this model here, we had these original two edges here, and then we decided to do a convert entities to create this thin walled extrusion. Well, when you've got a couple of edges like that, and then the topology of the model changes, like let's say I took this circle here and did a cut extrude and changed those edges, sometimes you get undesired results when you roll forward to that convert entity sketch. Like in this case, we did a convert entities of that original edge, which was very long like this. And now we see that that edge is much shorter. And so the convert entities didn't really work out. And so wouldn't it be nice if in that type of a scenario, we could roll back here. Here you see we've got that thin wall, which was converted. Here you can see we've got this sketch of the circle. Wouldn't it be nice if we could take that circle and change the topology of the part and then when we roll forward, our convert entities command just works. Well, the good news is that we absolutely can do this in SolidWorks. And in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how. Ow. So this topic of using convert entities to create a very robust model is something that we discuss in my new CSWP prep training program. This is an online program. You can take it at your own pace. It's five hours of pre-recorded video content along with sample files and even a sample CSWP exam. So if you've ever been interested in passing your SolidWorks certification, this is a great class to take and I've included a link down below in the description. The CSWP is in three parts, and the first part is all about SolidWorks part modeling, and that's where we get into this discussion of robust SolidWorks part modeling by making good decisions along the way. And one of those decisions has to do with convert entities by selecting faces versus convert entities by selecting edges. And let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to create a rectangle at 75 by 150, and I'm going to extrude that rectangle up to a height of 8 millimeters. Now I'm going to select this face, begin a sketch, and I'm going to select Select this edge. I'm going to hold control, select this edge. I'm going to continue holding control and I'm going to select this edge here and finally this edge back here. Then I'm going to let go of control and I'm going to go to the convert entities command. So what I've done is I've tagged this relationship, this convert entities relationship to the edge ID from that SolidWorks geometry. And that means if that edge changes, the convert entities is gonna have some problems. So now let's say I take that geometry and I extrude it. I'll just make this a thin feature extrusion. Let's go uh, reverse direction. I'll make it two millimeters and we'll bring that up to a height of say 28 millimeters. And now I'm gonna roll back in between those two features and I'm gonna change the, the topology or the geometry of this edge. Let's say we put in a 30 millimeter circle here and extrude cut that through the model. So now when we roll forward, uh-oh, now we've got a problem. So we can see that that convert entities didn't really work out the way that we had hoped it would. And we, you know, we didn't really maintain our design intent. Now we have to edit that sketch. So we go in here, we do edit sketch and we see that the convert entities is kind of broken. So let's delete that sketch relationship. And then let's take this edge here and do a convert entities. And then let's do a trim. So we could trim this up here. And uh, now we can exit that sketch and Okay, there we go. We were able to fix that up. Not that big a deal, but also not that big of a change. So now let's change our workflow here. Let's get rid of that thin feature extrusion. Let's get rid of the sketch that we created for that thin feature extrusion. Let's get rid of that circle and let's get rid of the sketch that we created for that circle. And now let's do the same thing. Let's pick this face, begin a sketch. But now instead of going around and picking the edges, one, two, three, four edges, instead, let's just pick the entire face and choose convert entities. Now, at this point, we get into a little bit of a discussion of the idea of a face loop. Maybe in SolidWorks, you've seen this terminology before where you right mouse button on an edge and there's this option here that says select loop. Well, what the loop means is it means all of the edges that are going going around the perimeter of that face. So if you right mouse button here on this edge, it says select loop, you can get all the edges that are going around that face. 
However, every edge in a solid model occurs at the intersection of two faces. So that means there's actually two loops here coming off of this one single edge. So if I right mouse button here and I say select loop, you'll see that there's the loop from the first face, but there's a little arrow here. And if I click on that arrow, there's the loop from the second face highlighted there in blue. So that's what's called select loop. Maybe you've seen that before and you were wondering what that means. Well, basically what it means is that SolidWorks is gonna go through and calculate the perimeter of the entire face. And what's cool about loop selections is if the geometry of that face changes, the loop selection will dynamically update. So you'll notice here, if I do a cut extrude through all, and then I go back and I right mouse button on this edge and I say select loop. Well, now it's going to get these two additional edges as part of that loop. And so I think that you probably can tell where this is going in that now what I can do is I can create a convert entities and I can select the face instead of selecting the individual edges. And what SolidWorks will do is it will go around and it will select the loop of that face. So I could select this face here, begin a sketch, then I could choose the whole face and I could choose convert entities. So now the entire face is converted. Now I can take that geometry, turn it into an extrusion. Maybe I'll turn that into a thin feature. Let's reverse the direction on that. There we go. And then let's roll back in time in the tree here. And when we roll back in time, we're gonna select this face here. We're gonna begin a sketch. We're gonna sketch a circle, give that circle a 30 millimeter diameter. And then we're gonna extrude cut that through all. And when we're done with that cut extrude, we roll forward and oh yeah, that is what we like. Let's make another change just because it's a lot of fun. Let's go over here, let's select this face. Let's choose to create a rectangle up here in the corner. We'll make this 18 by 25, and then we'll do an extrude cut to a depth of four millimeters. And there we go. And then let's roll forward and oh yeah, I am really liking that. That is a robust model. And if that is what you like, be sure to take a moment and hit that like button. Now, the one problem that you might run into is what if you don't want to convert the entire face? Like when we did this convert entities here, you know, we had to pick the edges because when we when we came in here, we picked this edge, we picked this edge. We don't want the rest of the face to be converted. Well, this is where the trim command comes in really handy because the trim command has a function that's perfect for this type of application. And that function is down here, we've got this option, keep trimmed entities as construction geometry. So what this means is when we go through the trim here, you see how we trim through and it leaves that geometry behind, it just converts it to construction geometry. Well, this is a great way to kind of blow away all of those additional edges. So if instead of creating this geometry by, by converting edges, let's roll back here, we're gonna do this the right way. Let's select this face, begin a sketch, and then we're gonna choose convert entities. You notice the face is already selected because I picked the face to begin the sketch. So I can just choose convert entities right away. And you can see that that lets me convert the entire face kind of all in one workflow. Let me show you that again. I'm gonna control Z, control Z. So now I'm no longer in sketch mode. Select a face, begin a sketch, and I'm just gonna go right up here to convert entities and boom, that converts the entire face. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna jump into my trim command, the power trim command, keep trimmed entities as construction geometry. And I'm just gonna drag through here and just pick these extra three edges so that they are no longer selected as part of that convert entities command. Now, if you only wanted part of this line here to be converted, you could do that too. You could do a right mouse button on this line. You could go to sketch tools. You could go to split entities, and then you could choose to split this line so now you see that you've split that line into two different entities. And then we could just take this section here and say, make that for construction. And there we go. Now it's only going to be this region here that gets converted. So now that I've got this line and this region converted, let's fully define that. We want to fully define every time, right? So now that we've got just this region converted, now we could go to features extrude. Let's make that an eight millimeter wall there. Eight millimeter wall. We're reverse the direction of that extrusion. Let's take that up to 22 millimeters and we will hit the green check mark. And oh yeah, that is looking pretty darn good. Now for the final test, if we roll back in time and then we choose to modify the topology of this part by maybe taking a circle and cutting that circle through, or maybe let's, let's say we're gonna add some geometry here. We're gonna, we're gonna add some additional geometry. So I'll double click on this face so the end condition becomes up to surface. It makes it very easy to do an up to surface. Let's do that again. So we take this, this circle here, S key, extrude, 
double click on this face right mouse button to finish all right now we've kind of added some geometry there to that base let's roll forward and oh yeah that is looking great now all we need to do is add some fillets here the appropriate radius and we are in business and so that is a little discussion of the topic of convert entities and how to create robust models by making good decisions when you're using convert entities. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite part about this video was and if you learned anything really cool from this video. Of course, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. And remember, this is just one part of what we cover in the CSWP prep training course. Part one of the exam is for robust part modeling. Part two is all about configurations and part three is all about assemblies. So if you like my style of teaching and if you're looking to get certified in SolidWorks, be sure to check out that link below. I hope you you guys enjoyed this video and I will look forward to seeing everyone in the next Power Moves.